I'm going to show you how to build a stock market app with App Inventor from MIT. Um, app Inventor's URL is up here, ai2.appinventor.mit.edu. I've got an app that I created called Fave Stock. You know, I set the screen title. I've got a label up here that right now is just saying look up Google stock price, and I've got an update button. Okay, so just very simple UI, and that's all I've done to the app so far. Okay, what I want to do is is actually talk to an API. So, you know, kind of the stock market app is a good example of, you know, your app talking to a web API, getting information, and then right now we're just going to display it. You could do whatever you want with that that stock information. And this URL I've got shown in the browser here. Let me let me click on this and enter this URL. So, it's a Yahoo Finance API call, okay? And I don't know if you notice it downloaded a file and I'll just show you um, what's in that file. So, so when I call this URL, it actually sends back a comma separated value, okay, value. So it's got the stock price for Google and then a comma and then how much it's changed today. So, so it's changed 4.99 and its price is now 5, 576, okay. So anyway, that's what this API does it's a very simple API, you know, that just sends stuff back in in comma separated values, okay? And as you'll notice, and, and I'm going to talk more in, in a, a subsequent video about these parameters, but my URL kind of specifies which stock I want to grab, okay? So anyway, that's getting it in a browser, but what we, what we want to do is our app to go access that API. And to do that in App Inventor, you want to go to the... Um, connectivity drawer and grab a web component. And there's also a web viewer in the user interface, but the web component is not for showing a web page, it's for talking to a web API, okay? So for kind of software to software communication. So I've got this web component, and now I'm gonna go over to my blocks, and what I wanna do is right on the screen initialize, I wanna go ahead and go get my, my stock, okay? So I'm gonna Call screen initialize. So right when the app opens, I'm going to request um, to get the stuff from Yahoo. So I'm going to call get, and of course before I do that, I need to set um, the URL that I'm going to try to get get from. Okay, so I'm going to say set web dot URL to something. Okay, what do I want to set it to? Well, I'm just going to go grab my URL from when I called Yahoo. Same thing. So now my app is going to call it. I'm going to stick that in a text block. So I'm going to create an empty text block and stick my URL in there. Okay? And you can do the same thing and copy it. And of course, you can change uh, this last part of it if you want to get a different stock. I'm going to get Google stock. Okay? So there's my screen initialize. I'm going to set my URL and then call get. Now you'll notice nothing gets returned here. This should really be called request. The web component really requests some information and then you've got to go down and grab a different event, the got text event, um, and this is when you're actually going to get the data back from Yahoo. So um, this says, okay, Yahoo, I want some stock information and when this event gets triggered, the got text, I've got the information. And in fact, it's going to be in response content. Response content, this parameter is going to hold that comma separate value you saw, which is which gets returned from Yahoo. Okay. So I'm just going to just set my stock info label dot text, and we're just going to do it very simple in this first version. Just set it to response content. Okay. So let's see. So I'm going to have to kind of restart my app. Um, so one way to restart your app to get the screen I, screen initialized to to run is um, I can just go to my label and you, you just need to change something in your user interface. So I'll just make this label a little bit smaller. Okay, and that's going to change the UI. And in fact, my phone is, is, I've already connected to this app. So my phone is running the app for us in live testing mode. And as you can see, um, when the screen initialized ran, when the app kind of launched, it went ahead and showed the Google stock price and the change of the day. Okay. And, you know, I can update it. Right now, it's probably going to show me the same stuff. Well, actually, it's not going to do anything because I haven't programmed this update button, but I could program the update button basically to do the same thing. And that way, you know, 
if I had my app running for a while and I wanted to kind of redo things, um, I could I could just click update. So on the update button, I really just want to do the same thing I do on screen in the slides. Okay, so I'm going to call Yahoo, make my request, and I don't care where the request comes from. I'm just going to change my label. So now, if I touch the update button, it will update from Google. But like I said, these numbers don't get updated except for every minute or two or something. So it might take a while. Um, okay, anyway, that's our first version. This is how you talk to a web API with App Inventor. In this case, the return value is very simple. It's a comma separate value. Um, value, okay. Um, you know, a lot of APIs have more complex XML or JSON data, um, but this one's a simple one, so it's a good first example for for talking to an API.